Hey there PS4 Gamers, it's the PS4 Gamer today and I'm going to be talking about Uncharted, A Thieves End Multiplayer and if it is worth it to play it or not. If you bought Uncharted 4 or if you think about buying Uncharted 4, I'm sure you heard of the massive single player campaign that there is providing 10 to 15 hours of content. Uh, one of the best game series to ever offer some of the best campaigns ever in game history. but. Many people undermine the multiplayer because Naughty Dog focuses on single players so much. But this time around, they actually put a lot of emphasis onto Uncharted 4 multiplayer. And uh, we're going to talk about it a little bit. So if you ever played Uncharted 2 or 3, you know that the multiplayer is mostly based off third person, kind of uh, pick, up, pick up guns around the map and shoot. Uncharted 3 introduced a loadout system for some of the people that were more Battlefield Call of Duty type players that like uh, creating their own class, which is cool, but they also kept the original Uncharted 2 mode of picking guns around the map. Uncharted 4, on the other hand, totally depends on your loadouts. You can uh, choose your primary weapon, your secondary weapon, you can choose your perks. Their perks are actually called mysticals, they're also called uh, sidekicks you can have. Or you could have equipment like grenades, uh, trip mines, etc. You could also put attachments on both your primary weapons and secondary weapons, as well as sub perks for your primary perks, like I said before with, with the mysticals and the uh, supports and stuff like that. Going into the gameplay of multiplayer, very fun, it's high pace. Uh, you use a lot of stuff that you do in the single player campaign, including grappling hooks, going from one ledge to another. It's a new addition to the Uncharted series, usable in multiplayer. You can also duck behind cover, jump over cover. Multiplayer feature that's not in the single player campaign, where if you hold L1, you could charge your melee to do one hit melee kills. That's a new addition to the Uncharted series. You also gain money each thing you do in the multiplayer. You getting kills, getting assists, getting KOs or downs. The difference between that is when you shoot somebody and put them on the ground, that's a down. But if you end up killing him, that's a KO. So you have to kill him while he's down because he's in a revive state. If one of your players goes down on your team, you can revive them before they get KO'd and they'll go right back into action, which is a cool feature they have. There's also equipment you can use, such as grenades. You can also use a revive pack, smoke bomb, mine, and C4. The grenade is just your typical grenade, throw and it explodes after a couple seconds. So you can revive without the revive pack. What the revive pack allows you to do is you could throw it at a distance and revive someone instantaneously which is really cool. Smoke bombs, what you could do is help make the battlefield seem unseeable so maybe you can go up for a melee attack or for flanks. Some really cool stuff you can do with smoke bombs. Mines are really good if you're trying a defensive strategy. You throw one down, takes a couple cents to detonate but when they detonate uh, it's an instant down if they're within a approximate close range. C4 is pretty cool also. You can uh, throw it at a wall, uh, detonate it whenever you please. You can also detonate it if you upgrade it to where you're actually down. So maybe throw it on yourself and uh, they kill you, you uh, detonate the C4, you kill them as well. Kind of a cool move you could do. There's also, for every one of the equipments you have, you can actually upgrade them. And also there are different sidekicks, basically are AI combatants that come into the battlefield. Uh, you got your Brute, you got your Survivor, Sniper, and Hunter. The Brute is basically a, a guy dressed up, high armor, minigun going around the map. Savior is a health pack guy that comes around and revives people. Sniper, you can position him whenever you want, and he'll go and snipe your enemies for you. And a Hunter, really cool, he comes up and he uh, runs after people and melees them, which is uh, pretty sick. So those are AI combatants that don't uh, count to the player count of the actual player base that are in the match. Now mysticals, these are sort of kill streaky type type deals we got there. Uh, you got your Wrath of El Dorado, which is basically you throw a totem out and it uh, launches and seeks nearby enemies. You got a cinematic stone that uh, I think I'm saying that wrong. Uh, that's basically like your revive pack, but instead of having to throw a health pack where it takes 10 seconds to revive, it revives instantaneously. Staff Aramanko, that actually, what that does is it is like a UAV in Uncharted. I uh, know, <laughs> a UAV in Call of Duty for Uncharted. Uh, it shows players' position on the minimap. A uh, Spirited Dim makes you invisible whenever you roll around. You're like spewing fire, makes you invisible when you're grappling hook as well. And uh, Indra's, Energy, uh, Indra's Eternity, 
which if you throw it or it's like a grenade but when you throw it everywhere around the area causes people to go slow motion so gives you a tactical advantage there sub perks you can equip maybe your ai combatants have fire higher reload speed maybe they can regen health or maybe your uh, kill streak can increase range on the uav maybe the revive revives in the full health instead of only partial health and there's lots of cool stuff you could do there cool different attachments you could put on your gun like suppressor you can have a uh, steady aim which decreases the hip fire reticle there is also accuracy which makes your guns more accurate recoil decreases recoil etc lots of cool things you could put uh, some cost more than other as far as point values uh, your create a class system loadouts you can have maximum points so you could put anything you want in your loadouts as long as you have enough points for it uh, same goes with the different equipment mysticals and ai combatants they take more points depending on uh, how if more effective they are like the guy with the minigun costs more than the sniper and the med kit guy he's the lowest of the tier so they allow you most a lot of custom ability good reference to this i would say is black ops 2 if you ever played that they have a point system that they use for their creative class it is very similar three different game modes for uncharted 4 multiplayer there is team deathmatch there is a ranked team deathmatch which is sort of a tournament system where you keep playing and you can go higher up there is silver tier there's bronze tier gold tier platinum tier and the better you do the higher tier you go it's kind of a personal accomplishment it's a really cool feature that they added there's also domination which is a mode that they like to call command and there's plunger which is capture the flag So is Uncharted 4 multiplayer worth it? I definitely think it is. And if you want to see more gameplay of it, you should go check out my channel. Subscribe, I got a lot of weapon reviews for multiplayer, some uh, tips and tricks, and uh, other cool stuff. If you want to see something that's going to last a long time through downloadable content, have a great player-based community to interact with, I highly suggest you playing Uncharted 4 multiplayer. Anyways guys, I'm the PS4 Gamer signing out and hope you guys have a great day.